Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So today I have Surubi with me on podcast and Surubi has 11 years of experience in the test engineering background and she recently transitioned into DevOps. So it will be a very insightful podcast where we will get to learn what are the steps Surubi followed to transition her career from test engineering. A lot of you were asking QA to DevOps transition. So in this podcast, you will learn how you can do it. So Surbi, first of all, thank you for joining the podcast today. Would you like to introduce yourself, your experience to our subscribers? Sure. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, a big thanks to you and your channel for having me in here in the podcast. It's my privilege to be here. Thank you. So I will start uh, briefing about myself. Okay. So my name is Surbi and I have 11 years of experience in India in majorly into testing. I started my career uh, with TCS where I was campus placed okay. and I did almost two to three years uh, of work in testing. There I was a pure manual tester okay. and uh, after uh, my two to three years of experience in testing, uh, in a TCS, I moved into IHS market, which is now an SNP Global. There, I almost worked for four years. Mm. There, again, majorly my uh, tasks were around manual testing. It was a banking application, so I was taking it. It was a financial institution, which all the application which I was taking care of. After that, I switched into Paytm, and uh, from there, in 2019, uh, I switched into Paytm, and. Uh, there I worked almost uh, two to three years as well. And after that, I moved into EY. There as well, I was working with some cloud technologies. Being into testing, I had all my titles into testing. But yes, I was working with DevOps team very closely. I was working with DevOps team and uh, started uh, developing my interest and starting some hands-on experience as well in DevOps practices. So that's how I started learning and gaining the knowledge <laughs> okay so you were basically a test engineer by designation and by work as well but yes. you got little exposure of uh, how devops is and what devops engineers were doing right yes but right. still like you know you might have some understanding of devops still when you actually decided that okay i want to transition to devops how did this thing happen so when i uh the major kickoff from me uh, for me was i uh, i was doing a lot of testing hmm. but they that has been most of the monotonous work which i was doing on usual basis and i wanted to learn new technologies and hmm. devops is such a field in which there are hundreds of tools you can learn ample of things and you can keep your learnings every day you can just keep keep it you just can keep on growing always yes, yes. there is no uh, stop you can think okay i'm done with this thing there is there is this is something i'm not learning new mm. so uh, devops i felt like there are so many tools mm. and uh, you can learn so much so my major uh, kick towards going to devops that i wanted to learn more tools wanted mm. to learn cloud infra so that was more of interest for me got it and right now you are in New Zealand, right? So when did you move from India to New Zealand? And uh, from what time have you started searching jobs in New Zealand? So I uh, moved to New Zealand in December. Achha. Due to family reasons, I wanted to move. Achha. And uh, uh, I got my work visa in March. So from okay. then I was eligible to find for the jobs. <laughs> So from that particular time, I started looking for the jobs, but the job market here was not really good in the first half. Hmm. And being when you have all the testing tags with you for yes. so many years, yes. it gets a bit difficult to find a job in DevOps. One thing I was only sure of that I want to move my career into DevOps only. I want to find my job in DevOps this time because hmm. it's it's I'm done with testing and now I want to move to Perfect. DevOps. So I started looking for the jobs in uh, DevOps. But again, whenever uh, I was uh, having calls from recruiters 
or when i put on linkedin that i i'm looking for jobs in devops it was bit challenging because all my previous experience titles were saying even mm. i have worked on and i had knowledge on but no one is accepting the fact that okay you know devops mm. so that was uh, that part has been really uh, challenging for me and secondly uh, i'm not sure about india right now what the situation is but in, in new zealand all the resumes are shortlisted through ats so it's a tracking tool yes. which it's a it's a ai tool which first filters out, filter out your resumes so if it does not have your titles properly it just rejects your resume hmm. so it's uh, it happened to me a lot that my resume was not getting selected uh, in almost 6 uh, months from now i hardly was able to give two to three interviews hmm. so your resume getting shortlisted here i i have felt that that's the major challenge hmm. makes sense yeah so uh, before uh, this uh, the job which i have recently got i res- uh, i got a i have given one more interview which was quite technical and which was for a senior devops role okay so that particular role uh, was asking for experience of almost 5 to 6 years and that interview went really well because i prepared from your videos a lot <laughs> and i could really explain them in the interview and uh, one of the question i still remember because it's it's been like 5 months i appeared for that interview so they asked me uh, for ci cd pipeline and i explained them uh, almost for 20 minutes and i explained them so well and he was like oh really someone can explain ci cd so well in, in this way as well <laughs> So <laughs> you might have explained CI CD with Argo CD I guess Yes 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 with, with everything yeah. like the way you yeah. talk almost I I had my words similar to that okay. because I <laughs> every morning it has been my routine that uh, I just woke up I just finished all the morning things and I just started uh, doing your videos and I always uh, did in such a way like it's a project for me which I have to finish mm. like it, it okay. was a job for me Okay. It, I never felt it like it's a video. I just have to see it and just switch it off. No, I always uh, tried that if I'm starting a video, I'm practicing it thoroughly. I am ha- maybe everything is not on my GitHub repository, hmm. but yes, it's in my system. So everything I used to do, I used to try. I used to hands-on, end-to-end video, and even I think uh, all the AWS playlist, DevOps playlist, most of it I have done completely, awesome. and with all hands-on. Uh, yeah. it, it has that part really helped me because when you're doing hands on you make mistakes and you yeah. learn by those mistakes yes so i keep saying that, that. Was... yeah obviously <laughs> i keep saying people that uh, do hands on because that truly makes a difference like when i am talking something i am talking from a lot of experience that i have working on those technologies and you might find it simple when i say few things or even when you watch the video you might see me doing some things with ease that's because of my past experience right and when you try to do the same thing even as simple as creating a load balancer and attaching the target groups you might face some issues so yeah practical learning truly makes a difference and did you clear the technical interview then uh, for that yes interview? yes 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 that uh, that interview was for almost 5 to 6 experience as i i was just telling and i literally cleared both of the rounds and they were really happy with me but the i i couldn't clear the managerial round and the only reason was i was very new to the country at that time okay. and my main focus was uh, clearing the technical interview on devops and i because it's been quite long i didn't give any interview yeah. and i forgot they might ask some questions like how our company works what we do and those questions i just simply uh, slipped out out of my mind that i have to yeah. prepare on those <laughs> as well. okay okay so that part i failed but technical part was really good i i could clear that and even at this time as well i could clear two interviews hmm. one was the contractual role and one was the permanent role and oh, nice. uh, i thought the permanent role is better for me and the organization which i'm going to join uh, they have almost they have more than 100 stores hmm. here and it's a very big organization so that i felt it, it's a it's a good thing for me to join but yeah Great. i got another job as well so <laughs> so like just going back uh, right from the basics how did you actually start 
preparing like what has been your uh, flow you said you were practically learning things right so while practically learning things uh, because you are learning from youtube significantly and there is no one to help you no one is sitting behind you to help you when you are stuck so can you walk us through that journey like march to september it's almost like 6 to 7 months so during this period how was your learning practical learning how did you unblock yourself quite interested to understand that <laughs> yeah so because i have many much of my experience in uh, uh, linux in mm. past 4 uh, to 5 years so i was good enough with linux till okay. that time okay so i was uh, like i knew almost most of the commands what needs to be done so this helps so i started with basic linux because i was working from that and uh, simple docker i have worked as well in the previous uh, in the in the past times uh, after that uh, when i started i started from the uh, basic devops course from your uh, youtube channel and i followed all the uh, youtube like one by one i followed all the video tutorials which i were, were there and when i used to be stuck i used to refer to chat gpt okay okay nice and uh, this really helped me because mm. even uh, when you write a single command on chat gpt it tells you the meaning of each and every word if you have mm. written kubectl get pods for example so if you it will tell you what kubectl is what get is what pods is why you need to do that so it explains really well very nice so if i used to be stuck i used to just put post the error and it helps me sometimes this also happened to me um because most of the times what i used to do whatever uh, videos i used to see i used to try i am having a mac so mm. i used to try all the videos on mac itself rather than going to a, a aws cloud because every time we don't need to yeah. uh, do all the things on cloud so most of the times what i did was i was doing things on um, on my system so uh, when i was following uh, those videos those videos used to be on a cloud and i had to f i usually i i try to my i try that i change at least a bit of thing rather than mm. not just exactly following the video just changing some of the steps that really that part also helped me because when i was changing something and not directly just following it helped me to troubleshoot more hmm yeah so that also uh, really helped me in in completing the things and i uh, i have I, i have almost all the tools in my system by now jenkins and i have dockerized everything <laughs> <laughs> nice very nice <laughs> so, so this how i used to do <laughs> no again that thing is also important like using uh, ai tools at this point uh, especially things like chat gpt or gemini because every time you cannot reach out to people right you have stack overflow agreed or even if you are taking a paid course you might have some support but it will take some time for them to respond back right, right. probably one day or 10 hours instead you have chat gpt try to ask it questions you will master the prompting it right. initially you might not be good at it but as you keep doing it you will understand okay this is how i have to ask question to chat gpt to get the right answer right right yes correct this truly really helps and uh, till the time let's say i got a uh, i got stuck in between for example mm. maybe like any of the port is blocked on mm. my system or it could be any any issue i got in my system and till the time i will go to someone and ask even i put on the comments section on youtube as well the person will take some time and mm. in the meantime you will lose the interest sometimes as well exactly yeah and when the flow breaks in between then you feel like no i again have to start from starting sometimes we are practicing on killer coda this happened to me this thing a lot mm. happened to me that uh, when i was practicing on killer coda because the session uh, which i uh, had it was for one hour Mm. so when i keep on doing things uh let's say i'm building a project and last 10 minutes are left and still there is some work to do mm. so in those areas it gets uh difficult if i am trying to ask someone else or seeking else uh, uh seeking answers from someone else rather than Your i used to try session is expired <laughs> session yeah. it's expired yeah so chat gpt really helps at that times that you just get quick response at least it tells you the steps yeah no that's 
that's a very good suggestion that you have given uh, because a lot of people what they do is they think that okay this should be solved so let me take a paid course somewhere and they they just think that you know if i take a paid course people will assist me on every single step it's practically impossible because you are joining a batch of 100 150 200 so there is no way person can sit behind you or next to you and try to help you have to unblock yourself yes that's that's the truth and uh, the more you do the more you will learn that's that's the key i think to crack any interview in the world yeah it's it's just doing hands on get your hands dirty only then you just uh, understand and things while you are doing this uh, so it's a long period time right like from march to september although you are giving let's say 3 to 4 interviews still it's a quite long period so during this period uh, were you also doing anything like certifications or were you writing some blogs because you need to elevate your profile right to keep your profile active to make recruiters figure out that okay surbi exists somewhere in new zealand as a devops engineer right. what were you doing yes so i did few things to uh, at least see recruiters hmm. so that they can rec- recognize me so uh, from your uh, youtube channel there is a terraform series yeah. so i followed the complete series and created a blog for 7 days okay and uh, in the recent interviews which i have given i showed them and they were really happy Like okay this blogs are really good you have written them so well hmm. so those blogs really helped me one thing uh yesterday itself i just uh did a uh, i was the speaker for one of the topic of kubernetes nice. so uh, those kind of meetups really helps i started joining meetups when i came hmm. here because i was not knowing much people uh, in this area in the devops area so i uh attend uh, i joined two uh, meetups there are uh, there is one for cncf and one is mm. for auckland kubernetes okay. so i joined and i usually go it it happens once or twice a month yeah so i usually go there and uh, recently they asked if anyone wants to be speaker so i said okay i want to be it although it was my first time but yes yeah. it was a good try i tried myself to be in that part uh, s- standing in front of so many people so it was good so yes this thing really helps public speaking helps if you are writing on uh, hash note this really helps and being active on linkedin it it this that part really helps as well so i posted i keep on posting whatever i used to do i keep on i kept on posting nice. that i did uh, In, in, last year i did my certifications so i used to post those as well recently i wrote i wrote some blogs so i used to uh tell people okay i'm doing something i'm not sitting what, idle what were you writing in the blogs because lot of people uh when i talk about i i keep saying this in the videos as well right i ask people to uh try to write something on hash node i believe you were also writing there so being a beginner in devops or someone who is an aspirant in devops what were you writing were you uh, initially hesitant that am i writing right or am i, am I writing wrong will people judge me like how was your blogging journey because you said you wrote seven days of terraform yeah so when i had to start this journey it was uh, literally saying i am very introvert okay. so being a person who is really introvert it's really difficult to do a public speaking or to even write something hmm. it, it it's very difficult so when but uh, one thing i'll i, I just want to uh, say that if you are reading something or uh, if you are watching a video if you will put that in a paper or if you will put that into your writing you will hmm. be learning even more hmm. because in that way you are trying to make other person understand as well That's so uh, that really helped me to even understand terraform more hmm. because when i uh, i have written for terraform so i wrote i uh, divided the terraform journey into 7 days i started first was just an introduction what terraform is why we are using it then i moved into its uh, state files then the variables then uh, i i can't remember all the things the for yeah. the 7 days yeah. but yeah so this how i uh, divided into bits and pieces the major topics variables i i have written so i divided all those topics into a uh, 7 day series so that if anyone follows it 
yes they can uh, it's easy to go through that channel and Very this nice. is a step by step journey that's how you can showcase to recruiters as well show to showcase to i think even if you're not showing it to everyone it's a it's a blog for yourself as well that you have mm. written you can follow it at okay. any point of time so that really helps yesterday i read somewhere uh, teaching is learning twice yes uh, that's true so basically if you are teaching or if you are writing a blog that means once you have already read and second time when you are writing it you are revising the concepts for yourself i think that's why learning in public has also become so popular uh, in 2024 and glad that it also helped you yeah it's really good even i was very hesitant uh, when i had, when i when i tell them that okay i'll be speaking i was not sure if i'll be able <laughs> to do it or not but yes when you keep on uh, doing these things this really helps to build your confidence that yes mm. because it was a new topic which i had to present exactly so you also uh, build more knowledge around that topic got so, it yeah and uh, surbi coming back to projects uh, i would like to understand so for your interview preparation you might have uh, you know you might have done a lot of projects but you will have a handful of projects to discuss right when interviewer ask you what have you done so what are the projects that you were talking during your interviews so that you know others can also get inspired yeah so uh, actually telling you uh, almost all the projects on your channel uh, which are in the devops playlist uh i have done al- almost all of them mm-hmm. but from the interview perspective i uh, explained ci cd okay. using argo cd that really helped me and i could explain it in uh, in a very good manner because i practiced it lot of times okay. i for everything which i used to do i used to first thing i used to do was i used to change a bit mm-hmm. even maybe i am changing a line or two in the code which was given by uh, which was present on your channel so i used to alter some steps and then used to deploy so that i will be having more understanding about it Great. and if i am having something uh, to troubleshoot so that part really that part is really good if you are trying to do something from your end as well and another project which i showed them was the ek setup Hmm. EKS uh, is uh, I, I think is widely used in hmm. across all the organizations by now it's very adaptive EKS or it's azure uh, cluster as well but uh, because i have some background of uh, aws only so i explain all the projects using terraform on eks cluster the end to end thing how that cluster is deployed how your uh, aws fargate works how uh, master and worker nodes are connected nice. with that so that part uh, i explained it really well and i even created uh, uh, in the interview itself i created the whole diagram how the things are getting connected which uh, like uh, from where to where we need to go so explain the entire thing in the uh, on the whiteboard and uh, rest of uh, ingress deployment i explained that mm. i have done so that end to end flow uh, how ingress controllers work how load balancers work which kind of uh, load balancers i have worked on so that and uh, some of the python projects as well uh, i explained there is uh, there is a project uh, which says that uh, we can remove the dangling images okay all the images which are uh, which we are not really using so we can remove that so i explained them and some lambda functions how we uh, like what is the purpose of lambda function so these kind of things i explained i think you you have choose a uh, very good projects because uh, in your first project you were talking about ci cd right so interviewer understands that you have experience with ci cd then you were using terraform to deploy eks on aws so you have infrastructure as code kubernetes covered cloud platform covered and the other one that you are talking about is python and using python again you are talking to the uh, or you are writing lambda functions so scripting experience as well so i think you have chosen very good projects and that might have also helped you most of the organizations and most of the devops roles what i have seen they ask for one iac tool 
Mm. You should be knowing mm. uh, one uh, CI/CD tool. You should be knowing one thing for GitOps. So and one cloud. Perfect. So most of the times they asked for uh, these things. What I have seen as of now here, at least. <laughs> Great. And Surbhi, finally, if someone from QA or QE, if they want to transition to DevOps, because I received like hundreds of comments asking, uh, "Can I transition from?" Uh, QE to DevOps, and you have done it. So, what is your say to them? Like, how much time do they have to spend? Is it really possible? Of course, you have done it. But what is your say to them? Uh, yes, definitely yes. Uh, we can transform from any background to DevOps, or I could say even from any background to any background. If if a person is a manual tester and wants to move mm-hmm. to AI. it's it's fairly possible it's just that we have to dedicate some time hmm. and uh, another thing i really want to say is not just watching videos is going to help anyone whatever we are watching we should be doing it as well hands on experience is really important and another uh, third thing i would say that uh, any person who wants to transform their career just spend maybe 2 to 3 hours daily and make it a practice that i have to make a target that i have to do this project by the end of the day i know with job it's it's bit difficult to uh, have that time for yourself to study but if we will keep on studying that is the only way to upskill yourself otherwise we will again always be stuck in the same career it it's get difficult to come out of your zone yeah so uh, i think uh, uh only having the comfort zone cannot help you <laughs> you have to move out of your comfort zone then only you can achieve something perfect thank you so much <laughs> for taking your time out today and i will paste uh, surbhi's linkedin as well as uh, the hash node where surbhi was writing uh, terraform blogs so that you can also follow you can understand uh, how the blogs are written Uh, you can take inspiration and you can also get connected with survey thank you so much for being here once again see you all in the next podcast and next videos on the channel thank you abhishek for having me thank you bye everyone